thank you to CTC Math for sponsoring today's video. Go to ctcmath.com forward slash LFT for a half price discount plus six months free. Well, good morning. This is as far as mama's getting for right now. Oh, and I got spots on my shirt, okay. <sighs> well, I'm trying to, this morning, tackle two big things. Will this take six days? Your guess is as good as mine. I'm really hopeful I'm gonna get one of the two things, which is organizing my uh, mega mama beast of a refrigerator. And then if I don't get to the spices this morning, it could be this evening, but I really don't wanna end today with these two things not done. Now, we also are having folks over for lunch this afternoon, and I will be making lunch for 14. Um, so I have already my ground beef doing the cold water defrost method. I am going to make a huge pot of chili. So before things get uh, too wild and crazy around here, like kids still need to troop through and do breakfast. But my, my filming plan is I've already, you know, they can come around this way and then end up over here at the toasters and I can set up you guys on the table and we can work on this beast. So hopes and dreams this is happening today oh plus the big thing of chili leaves outside the weather's changing i haven't done chili since april i had to look back through my videos i'm like when's the last time i did chili so it's been since april it's been a good bit and we all know i've got a whole lot of cans of beans and i will probably use 20. <laughs> i don't know we'll, we'll see we'll get count we're gonna make i've got 10 pounds of meat here i'm also gonna do a smaller pot of like a keto chili that doesn't have the beans in it per the request of a family member chili varieties coming massive refrigerator organization coming we're gonna get these spices together we're gonna do all the things will i get dressed and brush my hair at some point hopefully but if i don't tackle this refrigerator it's just not gonna get done so this refrigerator again it is all my hopes and dreams it is 47 cubic square feet it is just wonderful, wonderful, but inside is not wonderful. So a friend of mine, mom of 10, she also has that same refrigerator, and she told me, we're gonna walk way over here, she told me about these boxes here, these organizing containers, and I got four at first. She said they ended up being so good for her to get more. <laughs> so I got four boxes of four, and uh, so we got 16. And she said um, the big thing that that big refrigerator needs is like massive organizing. Organization. And she has a lot of condiments. She jokes that her and her family are saucy. We're saucy also. And then sometimes like I need a weird random ingredient that we may not use a ton of if I'm working on a recipe or something like that. So anyway, I got these. I guess we will pull these over. It's like driving through here, huh? Then I got these bread buddies to use. Oh, sorry, tripod, YouTube life. The bread buddies. Um, and some people have asked, well, or said they don't keep bread in their refrigerator. We usually keep whatever loaf or loaves we're currently using in the refrigerator. So, yes, I might have 10 loaves of bread in my cabinet if we have some active, some, some bread activity. Those are in the fridge. And so I thought those bread buddies would help just because sometimes, you know, lots of people getting in the bread and living, living in a place. Sometimes the bread gets thrown around um, or gets on the wrong shelf or whatever in our past refrigerator experience. Now there is, again, no organization with this current fridge. We moved our prior baby kitchen refrigerator to the basement in the land of the refrigerators and the freezers. That's how that has worked out for now. I have tried, there's two different families that I try to give that refrigerator to. You know, it's a nice one. I bought it, you know, almost three years ago, but it's still a good working refrigerator. And anyway, both families I tried to give it to, even though that refrigerator was the smallest French door one that I could get for the baby kitchen space, both families, it just won't fit in their kitchen. One family has like a built-in box around their refrigerator and they measured it, they can't get it in there, although they are in the market for a new fridge. And then the other family, something happened with the configuration space in the kitchen and it didn't work out. So I am totally open to finding someone local to give that refrigerator to for right now. It's downstairs. Okay, so 
In the meantime, uh, whenever we did that big refrigerator freezer moving day, everything that was in that baby kitchen refrigerator, that's where I'm pointing through the wall here, came into this fridge. Plus, I've been cooking in here and kind of, you know, like doing things and living life for probably a week or so now as of this filming. By the time you see this, it'll probably be two or three weeks because that's just how things go. This thing is an exploded mess. So I haven't had the time to like pull everything out and organize it till today. Finally, let's do it. I bet this table is gonna be covered and we're gonna pull it all together. And I will show you. I was hoping that I could just like, yeah, leave these doors open somehow. I know the fridge won't like me for those few minutes, but once the refrigerator is open, woo, look at all those condiments. Um, there's these fans at the top that like hold the doors closed for about 10 seconds once you shut the doors. So again, this is just total, total mayhem. We can't really live like this. <laughs> so this is us pulling it together. Yes and amen. Okay, let's do this. And so, like how I do, friends, repeat it all with me. Just get it all out of there. So that is what I'm doing first. I'm just pulling everything out of that refrigerator. I'm going to get it on the table. As I said, there's no rhyme or reason. We had our things that we had started to put in this refrigerator and, you know, odds and ends from leftovers and such. And we also had to unload everything from the refrigerator that was in the baby kitchen. So yeah, it, it was a lot of stuff and I obviously needed to go through it and organize and clean it out. Like, I mean, you know, we might've had the plastic bag that might've had, you know, one random hamburger bun left. It was just, this refrigerator needed a mom and uh, boy, the, it sure got it. So now I'm just going through, sprayed my vinegar spray around. Uh, you can see Friendly in here, my, I think he's 10 years old or so, my old kitty. He, he likes this new kitchen. He has been finding new adventures here and uh, definitely, and definitely getting fun little treats off the floor. So here's the spread on the table of everything that I pulled out. Lots of sauces, lots of sauces. And also since I'm making chili today, I already pulled some peppers and such that I had. So I'm gonna get my label maker, try to label some of these bins and make some sense of all of this. So here we go, I am making labels with my label maker. Also putting our bread and our new bread buddies. Now I, I am reporting from the future that we have used those bread buddies for about a week and a half or so. We're already on our, I think our third loaf in each of those bread buddies and they're nice, they're very nice. I can stack them on top of each other. You know, we're not crushing the bread. Um, so far so good and that that works well for us that way we don't end up with you know again like one piece of bread in a bag now my other bread that I save for later we go through it so quickly that's just kept in the cabinet uh, used to back in the day I would buy all my bread for one month about 15 loaves and I would freeze about half of it and we would go through those first first couple loaves and then I would just start pulling one every other day or so out from the freezer and we would use it from there. So I also had good experience freezing bread. Here I am now labeling my different bins. So far, so good with that. Yeah, we got fruit, we got a yogurt bin, uh, tortillas and other <laughs> odds and ends bread like hamburger buns. Uh, two condiment bins, vegetable bin. Now we'll see how they all work. So I'm just putting the fruit in that bin. And so far that has been working. Like whenever we work through a bag of apples, we'll just bring another bag of apples up. And there I am doing a vegetable bin, getting that in there. Realized I needed another label, so I'm making that. And so we do have quite a bit of tortillas. And so 
got a whole bin full of those. Also the low carb tortillas, then some Ezekiel bread. I know that's usually kept in the freezer, uh, but I have kept it in the refrigerator as we work through that loaf and it has been okay. So um, it hasn't, I don't know, gone bad on us or anything in particular. There's various butters and sour cream and cream cheese. And now, again, the condiments, our other Dr. Seuss book, the condiments were so deep and so wide. <laughs> so, yes, various. We have a ketchup that's almost done and then a new ketchup out and some sugar-free ketchup options. Make it another label now. Now I'm doing a box there just of various jellies and syrups is how it's working out. And the kids knew I was filming. They were working around me. So they were fl flying fast around the edges there. We got all our shaky cheese and some salsa, salad dressing. Again, at this time when I was doing this, I was thinking, okay, this is either going to work great or it's not going to work. I'm going to have to work something else out here. But definitely worth a shot. And um, these bins ended up being, I believe it broke down to about $4 or so a bin. And I figured, well, if I didn't use them here, there would be other things I could use them for. I was thinking that the top shelf might be a good place for leftovers again we'd have to kind of try it out and of course there's some room in front of the bins but I thought well we could use those for I mean obviously more room to set things as we need it unloading the Zevia soda. I have that on Amazon subscribe and save because that is hard to find locally. Um, but I'm putting that on the bottom shelf. I just figured, well, it makes sense to have, you know, orange juice and milk and apple juice and coffee creamer and little drinks to grab quickly there. And while we were moving into this kitchen, again, for me as the mom, it felt like moving into a house so I was definitely you know letting kids get just yes get a can of Zevia with dinner <laughs> to even like that way we don't even have to pour a drink trying to make things as easy as possible because um, this was a lot of extra work for me in these little hours I could find here and there so it was a big focus of my extra time noon now you can see I can move these bins, you know, either forward and have room in the back or push them back. I tried to put like some in front sideways and they weren't fitting quite right, which again is fine. You probably saw me, I was working through, I was thinking, well, maybe this shelf would work good as a leftover shelf. But so many of these items like we need to access and kids and family need to access like fruits and vegetables and yogurt, bagels, bread. We obviously use a lot of tortillas. We have three... Let's see, one, two, well, I guess four. Um, 
condiment bins. I just went ahead and made one just for jelly and syrups. This one has more salad stuff. I'm tempted to make like a salad stuff condiment bin. I might end up doing that, but I really need to get out of my pajamas and get cooking. <laughs> I might get the meat cooking and then go change, but I'm kind of like way past done my time with this for today. Definitely, I think there's gonna be times where, you know, it'll be two bins for fruits and vegetables. Now, I do have more of these items in my other refrigerators. This is just what has made it up here to the main refrigerator. We will definitely, you know, fill this top shelf, which is my idea of a good time, with leftovers and such. And so we will just start using this, see how it works, see what we need to tweak. I did a whole bin just for lunch meats and just for cheeses, and then another one for butter, sour cream, cottage cheese. I mean, I could have just put dairy on there, but I was trying to be a little specific, like for when kids help put groceries away and such. I could probably make another tag that just says, you know, ketchup slash mustard for this one. Um, so we can drill down and organize it some more. But again, mama's gotta get cooking. But here we go, it definitely looks much better than it did before. And so here I had 10 pounds of our grass-fed ground beef that we got from a local farm and I was defrosting it using the cold water defrost method and I was just going to get it going and those wonderful, like my review so far, so good, so mega wonderful experience so far using those 17 inch lodge skillets. And yeah, with several things I've cooked in the Mega Mama kitchen so far, I've used both of them at the same time and I'm not mad about it. You'll see the stool stacked beside me there from the island. Gabriel is going through and doing a big sweep on the whole kitchen for us. So thank you very much, Gabriel. And right now I am just cooking up the ground beef. I'm also washing off and prepping the peppers that are going to go in the chili as well. So what I figured I was going to do was I was doing my 22 quart stock pot full of chili. And then I was also going to do a smaller pot of basically just a keto chili for a family member who's not eating beans right now. And I had some zucchini though. Yay! Look at this. This we'll get to, we'll talk about the zucchini, but let's talk about this. This shot right here, this is like my whole vision for the whole kitchen. I thought right here, this is where I'm going to stand and do so much prepping and so much filming. Like this is the spot where I will live my life. <laughs> and here we are, it has come to pass, yay. And you might even see a pig in the background at this angle out the back um, sink window there once in a while. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? Anyway, I figured uh, for the family member not eating beans that in the keto chili, I did have some zucchini. Um, I could have also put mushrooms in it. I don't think on this particular day that I had a lot of mushrooms. Mushrooms are something that I either have none <laughs> or I have a whole lot. And right now I have a whole lot of mushrooms, but on this day, on the chilly day, I did not. Um, so anyway, I am just going through now and I'm chopping up all of these peppers. And then I also have three onions and we are going to get those sauteing in a different pan while the ground beef cooks as well. And look at that, you are getting a little pig view in the background there. We are doing some additional fenced areas in our woods. Several of those pigs that are in the old garden fence area are going over to the new fenced area in the woods. 
And let's see, I got, gotta count my pigs. Well, three of them that we have currently will be processed. I need to make an appointment for that though. So they should be processed. Uh, let me think of my days of the week. Yep, summer 2023. Um, and then of course the big boar, we're keeping him cause he's got one job in life to make us more pigs. And then we got Mama Pig, and she had two babies. Now, both of her babies are also males, and so those will also be processed. But they're Cooney Cooney Pigs. They're slow growers, which is what we wanted here on our little pretend homestead. Easier to handle and such for us. Um, oh, look, let's just dump in all the garlic. Why not? Anyway, talking about future pig processing, the two that are the current baby pigs, uh, within the next two years, they'll be processed. And that's just how our little pig farm is going to work. I actually ordered a whole hog already processed that we will pick up later in October. And then I ordered another cow that we will pick up in December. We just don't have our own meat in as far as those animals go yet. Now I am getting ready to butcher a whole lot of chickens later in October. Uh, so that's a coming. We'll just take several days and get that done. And then we'll have our own chicken and we're at least supporting local farmers by buying a whole hog and buying a whole cow from them. But then by next summer, 2023, at least we can, you know, another life upgrade. We can move into our pork being pork that we have actually raised here. So that's exciting. I still haven't gotten to, I guess it's just not going to happen for this summer. I wanted to get another calf that I could raise as, uh, we could raise as a meat calf that we would also have processed next summer, but I just haven't got that done. I actually, I sent, um, messages, a whole bunch of message, messages. Yes, I'm going to clean my stainless steel now. Um, at one point this summer and I had a few people I was talking to and then it just never panned out and, here we are moving into the kitchen and making chili and got school going again and all those good things and mama just didn't get to it. So I think it'll probably be best to wait until spring to do that. And now I'm going through. So here's the upstairs kitchen pantry, like in progress here. Um, I just unloaded all those beans and some corn and I'm carrying them over. This just shows like, again, when I make chili, how many cans we go through so many tomato products. Now those big cans of tomato sauce I got at Sharp Shopper for $1.99 a can. It takes a lot. So this is a variety of like every possible bean. I mean we've got navy beans, two for a dollar cans. These, um, these are dated for actually just about a week ago, September 4th. And I even throw butter beans in my chili. Um, we got pinto beans, so some of these are from Walmart, but some of these are marked down from Sharp Shopper. And then uh, we have, yeah, chickpeas and all kinds. I definitely, I need some black beans, so I'll have to go downstairs for that. I don't think I have any of those up here. I've got this big thing of corn. This was when, and I know my fan is probably being too loud, so I'm sorry about that. Um, this is at Walmart a bit ago, but now these two big cans, um, Tomato sauce, Sharp Shopper, $1.99. Now one was dated for April 2022 and one was dated for March of 2022. Not everything at Sharp Shopper is past the date. Many things are close to it. Some things will be passed, but you'll have to tell me by my grocery hauls. I bought these several months ago. Canned goods are fine past their date, no problem. So I'm gonna use one of these for the big mega pot of family chili and probably go ahead and use the other one. Well, I'm saying I'm gonna use it in the keto chili. I might actually need to get a third can. Okay, and then in here I have a variety of like diced tomatoes. I'd like to go get some crushed tomatoes as well. I just love tomatoes. So this is what I'm working with right now. I think it's about time to get these pots out and get those going. Be sure to click the first link in the description below. Go to ctcmath.com forward slash LFT for 50% off plus a bonus six months free. You cannot beat that. So CTC Math offers math video tutorials and summaries. These are clear, complete, and easy to follow. It's like your child having their very own teacher right there with them. This ensures your children understand something before they are asked to practice it. 
There are worksheets and interactive questions based explicitly on the video tutorials that the children have just watched. There's weekly revision sets, which are a great tool to consolidate learning and to help identify any specific learning gaps. There's extensive reports for the parents, which is valuable in monitoring your child's progress. Also introducing CTC Math Mastery. What is mastery? Mastery is an even better measure of how well a student really understands a lesson. It encourages and rewards a student who tries more questions to reach and succeed at higher difficulty levels. Mastery is measured as the highest difficulty level that a student achieves for a lesson. A four-star mastery level means they have been able to answer the most difficult question. This has many benefits for the students, such as unlocking the questions, which are more challenging, which with greater depth. Also, the students get the right question in the right order at the right time. There's also benefits for parents and teachers. It helps identify gaps in student knowledge or where further work is needed. Be sure to check out the new CTC Math Mastery feature. Also, CTC Math offers a 12-month money-back guarantee, no questions asked. If this math curriculum is not for you and your family, CTC Math will provide a full refund. I think that is fantastic. CTC Math is a whole lot less stress when it's math time for both parents and kids. So again, go to ctcmath.com forward slash LFT for 50% off plus a bonus six months free. Today's video is sponsored by CTC Math. Click the first link in the description below. Head over to ctcmath.com forward slash LFT for 50% off their phenomenal math program plus a bonus six months free. So I am just setting out all the spices, the onion powder, the garlic powder, some crushed red pepper, just a little bit of that chili powder, paprika, and ground cumin, and hey, let's just throw some parsley in there. And now I'm actually, I'm washing out my 22 quart stock pot. Just looked like, you know, it needed to be washed. I say you know, but you may not know. It was sitting on the floor in my other kitchen, so it just needed, needed to be rinsed for sure. And I'm just dumping all of those seasonings into the meat. I did not drain this meat either, and that's because, just because it's the the homegrown, grass-fed uh, cow from the farm, it really, um, it's like a 90-10 meat or better, and so it's just not, I don't even need to drain it. It's such, such good quality meat. So, yay, now I am adding in all of those peppers and onions and garlic, and it all just fits in that big 17-inch pan from Lodge. Again, I just, uh, not sponsored, not sponsored, but I cannot recommend those pans enough if you need a big pan to cook in. And look at this, look at this convenience. I just plugged in the can opener right beside my stove, right where I needed it. Just amazing. So one of you sent me a fantastic can opener that opens the cans and uh, lifts the lids and there's no sharp edges. This is my other Hamilton Beach can opener and it works great as well. Of course, it's the old fashioned way, uh, but I still have to use it to get my big cans open and it'll still fight me a bit, but you know, that's just part of the fun. It will open them though. <laughs> the other can opener um, that does the safety edges, I can't get it to open my giant cans.
And now I'm just gonna begin the process of dumping in the tomato sauce. Doing our second big can of sauce. It's okay, we're gonna get through it. This is good for our, our perseverance, right? <laughs> Getting through those big cans, we can do it. Now I'm doing a big can of corn. I had got that at Walmart a bit ago. They don't always have like the big corns and the big green beans, but at some point after 2020, they were like, hey, hey folks, here's big cans of corn and green beans. So I picked up some corn there then. Very dangerous for me to be oh, like, do not watch what I'm doing here trying to get the magnet to yeah I am the woman who has deeply sliced my finger on a can of corn actually I did I did I have the scar to prove it woo it's like we're cooking with fire huh and so now I'm just scooping all of that wonderful ground beef and veggies into a big measuring cup and getting those in the pot that way. So, so far we have two cans of tomato sauce, one big can of corn, and then it will be probably about eight pounds of meat, I'll say. And all those veggies, I saved some back for the other pot of chili that I'm also going to make. on the other chili variation in my other pot. So I have two cans of tomato sauce in there so far. So I just open my beans and dump the whole thing in. I mean, even with the liquid that the beans are in, some people drain the liquid. It's up to you. Uh, that's just what I've always done. So here, whoa, fast forward to the end. You know I filled that 22 quart pot up to the brim. I sure did. We had our bowl stacked. We had our sour cream, our shredded cheese, our big 22 quart of chili. I was feeding 14 people for dinner that night and then we also had the smaller chili variation. Hey friends, well still haven't got to that spice cabinet organization but it's gonna happen in this video. Oh yes it is. We're so excited. Uh, obviously not too excited because it's not done yet. Just we got school going this week. We did uh, three full days, even though I call them like our gentle practice days. You know, that was a lot to get that going. And then today we had our beginning of the year homeschool group kickoff picnic with friends all day. Then on the way home, what I'm gonna show you is these are not tomatoes from my garden. Oh no, they are not. Locally, there's several places where I can buy fresh homegrown produce in boxes like this. Uh, this is marked down tomatoes. Like these tomatoes needed to be purchased today. So they are 20 pound boxes of tomatoes that were marked down to $15 a box. I had the last four boxes they had available. I don't have time to can no tomatoes right now. No, I don't. I do have about, hmm, about five gallon bags of tomatoes from my garden in my freezer. And I'm gonna go ahead and bag up and freeze these tomatoes. And then I'm hoping at some point in October, the whole month of October, like we are home, we do have some field trips and you know, like one day out a week type stuff. September, in my world, there's just no time for anything else like that. So. These will at least get in the freezer, and then come October, we'll deal with them then. So 
they are so pretty and so beautiful and look the mega mama bowls just how things are meant to be I'm just going to unload the tomatoes into these bowls and I'm going to give them a good rinse off. I mean, these are locally grown organic tomatoes. They haven't been sprayed with a bunch of stuff or anything in particular. Look at that. Yay, we have our tomatoes. But I am going to get them rinsed off. And there are a few, a few in each box that I found uh, that weren't even worth me freezing. But again, I have chickens. I have a lot of chickens. <laughs> so what my loss is their gain. And if I ended up, you know, having eight tomatoes or so that went to the chickens, they definitely do not mind. So now I'm just washing those off. I also have some potatoes going in the pot behind me on my stove. some more towards the bottom of that box that needed to go to the chickens but that's okay I wonder if my green tomatoes on my counter are watching me with these tomatoes and thinking thoughts <laughs> how could she do this don't worry those tomatoes will also have their turn as as those ripen up I get those bagged and in the freezer as well now I have I really have no idea how much tomato sauce if I was going to make tomato sauce for 11 for a year how much do I really need I don't know I think a lot I know I buy a lot of tomato sauce and I use a lot of tomato products but if I'm making my own and you know again trying to provide my own tomato sauce boy there's a journey for you huh I'll probably ask my friend Jessica over on Three Rivers Homestead how much, how many tomato products she puts up. Because I think she's got, they've got seven kids. She's expecting her eighth. I think her oldest might be 15 or so. Uh, maybe 14. Anyway, she's a family of nine, about to be family of 10. And she's got lots of good canning experience. So I bet she can give me a good idea on a number to aim for. So I'm just hoping to get, there we go, I'm going to also chop up some of these yellow potatoes and I'm going to get those going in my pot. But anyway, I think Jessica could probably give me a good idea. Definitely hoping to do some more canning in October, but like I say, uh, September is already gone for me. So <laughs> uh, it's just, it's, it's booked, it's full, but definitely hoping to do more in October and on through the winter.
And so I have my recipe um, over on largefamilytable.com just for some quick freezer friendly gravy. I mean, pretty much all gravy is freezer friendly, but just good to let people know, hey, this is freezer friendly. And so I have even uh, decided on this evening I wanted to maybe get a bag of gravy in the freezer, plus have enough to go with this mashed potatoes. So I'm doubling my own large family gravy recipe because I want to make this whole 17 inch lodge beautiful. You're know, going to write poetry about this pan. I want to get this whole pan full of gravy for sure. So I melted my butter and then I was going to town with my flour there. And I realized, oh wait, I don't have a whisk here quickly. The whisk, I have a drawer actually near me where the whisk should have been, but we are learning our drawers. It, they were put over on the other side of the kitchen. So I called out to Travis because I couldn't leave my gravy and he is going to save me and bring me a whisk here. Yes, he is. About this time I'm saying, Travis, Travis, help me, help me. <laughs> Yay, there we go. Just feels better. And he's just standing there supervising the gravy. <laughs> so, anyway, whisking that all up now. Going to add some onion powder, some garlic powder, some Himalayan pink salt, some salt and pepper. You can probably see him in the background. He likes sitting at that back end of the island there. And now I'm going to start adding in my broth. I had four broths from my pantry that were getting near their date, so definitely wanted to use those up. That's also why I decided to make a bigger pan of gravy. So now the gravy is just about done. I'm just sticking with it here a little bit. And then with those potatoes, now, you know, I forgot, I could have used my pot filler. <laughs> so I'm still getting used to the different different tools I have available. But um, when the potatoes were done, I, that's what I have Travis for. So he comes over, yeah, look at us, we're going to fill that pan to the top. Um, but. Travis will dump most of that potato water out for me. I leave some of it. Um, so that's been one of my big questions is, well, whenever you have the pot filler to fill the pot, you still have to dump it. How will you dump it? Well, usually a, tra tra a Travis, <laughs> usually Travis or uh, one of my teen boys will get the pot for me and drain it. So that, that's what we require, putting a little salt in those potatoes there. I'm also adding in some sour cream, added some butter, and just using the potato masher with them. I had some sheet pan chicken thighs I had done the night before. Of course, always trying to cook extra and have leftovers, so I so I was heating those back up too. Well, friends, I'm out here on my porch about midnight. Haha. -ha. 
<laughs> and I just, I, I'm saying goodbye, I guess. I guess we're not doing the spices in this video. I'm worried that I'm going to make this, you know, like another 10 hour movie. Ha ha. So I guess I end it here. Do we do that? But I wanted to show you, look at this giant pumpkin. That's fun, huh? And then we got two new hanging mums today. And then I got this mum. I believe it looked like it'll be purple blooms. I know it's good to get them before they bloom. So you have fresh blooms in a couple weeks. I kind of got them staggered there. That's one of the little pumpkins that uh, Benjamin picked out. There's a mum that just has started blooming. And then there's a full bloom yellow. And this one's kind of a rust color. And then this is another giant one. They had me at, they were one for 15 or two for 20. Now we do have some pumpkins that are growing in our pumpkin patch, but this also, again, helps get us started. So I will probably hang up my hanging ones tomorrow. I guess I won't do that at midnight, ha ha. So I will hang these up and work on more festive decorating in the weeks to come but I thought I could say good nights so we have good night talking hand and robe um we're helping friends move tomorrow and so I know it's just going to be another day that I'm not getting to those spices so hopefully in the next video we'll get that done that's acorns falling I'm like is a tree branch falling what is this okay good night I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye bye. Thanks again to CTC Math for sponsoring today's video. Go to ctcmath.com forward slash LFT for a half price discount plus six months free for helping your children with math and saving your mama sanity. Yay. I'm really hopeful I'm going to get one of the two done today, this morning. Hold on. Um, see if I can close my tripod and talk. Talk. Hold on, something's happening there. Is that I? I've, I've been. <laughs> so how many times can I stutter here? Um,